محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني من نور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعلومك برحمتك يا رحم الرحم الحمد لله بي افتوفيق تو continue study of hadith 37 from 40 hadith hadith is as follows an Abi Abdullah alayhi salam Shaykh Kulain rahmatullahi through his chain of narrators and then from Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Isa, from Muhammad ibn Hamran, from Fazl ibn Sakan, says that Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Qala Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Imam Ali alayhi salam said, I'rifullaha billah wa rasoola bil rasada wa ulil amra, ulil amra, بالأمر بالمعروف والعدل والإحسان Know Allah with Allah So you must know him through himself Know Rasul with Risala with message Know all the Am those who are in charge بالأمر بالمعروف with commanding the good. So you have to see who is commanding the good. Wal adl and justice. Wal ihsan, kindness, benevolence. And he will explain later that it can be uh, taken in the way that adl and ihsan are at to ma'roof means bil amr bil ma'roof bil amr bil adl bil amr bil ihsan no ulul amr based on commanding ma'roof commanding justice commanding ihsan or it can be added to amr bil ma'roof not to ma'roof itself means no other amr with commanding the good, with justice and with ihsan, means observing justice, practicing ihsan, not commanding justice and commanding ihsan, observing justice and practicing ihsan. So there are two ways to consider this from a grammatical point of view. So here starts with a distinction between Elm and Marfa, because the hadith we have Arafu, not Elamu. It's Arafu. We have had this before in different, you know, places and on different occasions. That Marfa is a kind of knowledge which is more personal, more intimate, more particular. Uh, elm is very general. So he says, it is said that El literally is for kulliya, to know universal, general things. And Marifa is for details and particulars. Also they say Arif Billah is the one who has knowledge by presence of God. But Alim Billah can be someone who has knowledge through philosophical arguments. Know that there is a creator, there is a wajibul wujud, but doesn't have intimate, personal acquaintance with God necessarily. He says some people also have said uh, there is another difference. In addition to this difference, there is another difference. They say ma'rifa is normally used when you had ma'rifa or some understanding, then you forgot, then you again have it. You know, maybe in uh, English, when we say recognition, cognition is ma'rifa or understand. Recognition means again, although sometimes we use it and say recognize, but 
it should be in the sense that you had some acquaintance, then maybe you forgot or maybe you lost contact and then again, for example, you recognized. So he says, some people have said in Ma'rifa, there is a history of forgetting what you knew and then you gain that understanding. So in this way, if we accept this view, Arif is someone that after knowing Allah prior to coming to this world and then forgetting him is able to come back to understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if you have, I don't know, seen uh, Falsafatuna, our philosophy by the late Ayatollah, Sayyid Muhammad Baqir al-Sad, rahmatullah alayhi, when he talks about the idea of Plato, uh, he calls it Nazariyatul Istadhkar, because Plato had this idea that we knew everything, but when we came to this world, we forgot. And now we have to not new from scratch. We have to remember and things are there to help us remember. So some people have said that before coming to this world, for example, we had experience in alam dhar the universe of the particles. We knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we forgot, now we have to gain that back. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمْ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْحَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ Sorry. قَالَ أَلَسْتُ بَرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَىٰ أَنْ تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا إِنْ هَذَا غَافَلِينَ This ayah is interpreted by many scholars as a kind of world which is called alam zar zar means particle particles zarra is one particle zar is more we were all present there but very small and allah asked us to bear witness uh, by showing us himself and asked us alastu barabbakum am i not your lord and we said yes so we have this basis of, you know, fitra, etc., in us. So they say Arif is the one who is able to regain that understanding of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And they say if the veil of tabia, hijab of the material world, is removed, and there is no ghafla, no nasya, no heedlessness, and no forgetfulness. We can remember those universes before. Then he says something, and he seems that he finds some value in it, but he doesn't agree. He says, Bazi as migoft. But he doesn't mention who was that person. One of the ahlizok, zok means taste. But it is normally used for Zogh Erfani. So someone who had some mystical understanding used to say that all our spiritual uh, ascension and mi'raj is to remember again the past. And we go back to those worlds before, for example, to Allah Mithar, or even before when we came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example. They say every person has uh, some degree that can go back. Some people remember when they were seven years old, not earlier. Some people remember when they were five years old. Some people were, for example, remember when they were three years old. It is said that Ibn Sina, we are not sure, but it is said that remembers the day he was born. And they say some people may remember even before birth and when they were in burial. 
and maybe even more. So he had this idea, this person, that the maximum uh, you can know is to know the beginning of our journey from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the maximum of Irfan. But Imam Khomeini doesn't agree with this opinion. He says this means that Irfan and Mi'raj of Urafa, ascension of Urafa, is regression, is going backward. But he says, no, we go forward, but it's like a cycle or a circle. He said, you know, we have come from Allah very far and then we go back. But we don't go back in the same that we come here and then we go back where we came. This time that we go back to Allah, we have made some progress. So maybe we can say like, you know, we go uh, above. So he doesn't agree with this kind of interpretation of Erfan. But anyway, if we say Erfan is to regain your understanding of something that you have forgotten, this is a good example of how, for example, Erfan can be interpreted as an example. Then he quotes from Ayatollah Shah Abadi. As you remember, Ayatollah Shah Abadi was a teacher of Imam Khomeini. There's a documentary actually on Ayatollah Shah Abadi. It's very interesting. And uh, it's part of Hadith Asarv series. And Imam Khomeini was very close to Ayatollah Shah Abadi. He was uh, learning many subjects from him and in the documentary you know some of his students and you know family members were interviewed and they said he used to be the first person to go for lesson and be the last person to leave the house of his teacher and whatever he was teaching he was attending and as long as he was there in Qom Ayatollah Shah Abadi, he was attending his lectures. And also it is said that Ayatollah Shah Abadi so much loved him that called one of his sons Ruhullah. Because one of his sons is Ruhullah Shah Abadi. So he, he has great respect for Ayatollah Shah Abadi, as you know. Uh, he always respects him. Even in the first session on 40 Hadith, we mentioned this. Even here says, Sheikh Arif Kamil Shah Abadi. Arif Kamil, perfect Arif. Ruhi Fida, may I be his ransom. He talks like this about his teacher. He says, according to Sheikh Shah Abadi, Prophet Adam before eating from that tree had no attention to the worldly or you can say physical or mulki aspect of himself. He was very much attracted and taken by Malakuti and the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His expression is this. He says that Tavajuh be mulik hod nakonat, va majzube alam reib va makam utsi washat. He was attracted to the hidden world, to the alam reib, to the kingdom of Allah. And this was not very right because he had also to pay attention to the physical aspect because human beings have two sides. We are not angels. And he says, Ayatollah Shah Abadi had this idea that what happened to Adam 
was that he was forced to pay attention to both sides through that experience that he had. So although uh, in a sense, what he did was a mistake, but this mistake in the end led to a kind of progress coming to dunya and experiencing all the hardship of dunya which was very painful but could uh, let him reach a more perfect situation if he manages in dunya to remain you know a servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mindful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any case this was about Erfan. Now, after talking about Erfan and the difference between Erfan and Ma'rifah on the one side and Elm on the other side, and then saying this Adr and Ihsan can be added to Ma'ruf or to Amr, as I explained, we go to the first chapter. What is meant by Erfullah Billah? No God with God or by God. What does it mean? He says, different scholars, according to their own style or according to their own field of study or you know which field of study was more preferable to them, they have come up with different interpretations. He mentions four interpretations and then he says his own opinion as the fifth. We will, inshallah, discuss these four and we will leave the fifth, which takes time because he has some introduction to it for the next week, inshallah. The first interpretation is by Sheikh Kulaini himself. When Sheikh Kulaini mentions this hadith in Kitab Tawheed, the section on Tawheed, Babu ennahu la yu'raf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not be known except with himself or by himself. In that section after the first hadith, which is our hadith, Sheikh Kulani has some explanation. Mullah Sadra rahmatullah alayhi has thought this explanation is ending of the hadith. He considered this as not word of Kulaini, as word of Imam Sadiq salam, after quoting Amir al -Mumani. But Imam Khomeini says, no, this was the wording of Sheikh Kulaini. What does Sheikh Kulaini say? The summary of what he says is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created bodies, spirits, and the lights alone. He is the only creator. No, he has no partner in creation. And nothing is like him. If you know Allah through bodies that he created, or through spirits that he created, or through lights he created, you have somehow likened him to these things. You have not known him by himself. And you have to do tanzi. You have to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say Allah is different from this and greater than these things. And if you do tanzi and say Allah is not like bodies he created and the spirits are created and the light created, then this is proper knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one opinion. The second opinion is opinion of Shaykh Saduq, He says the meaning of knowing Allah by Allah is that if we know Allah with our own intellects, then this is a problem because Allah has created our intellect. If we know Allah through the prophets and messengers, Allah has sent them. And if we know through our nafs, 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. So everything that we do is difficult uh, in the sense that would not enable us to know Allah. So we have to go further or higher and try to know him more directly, not through things that he created or people that he has sent. Try to rise to the level that we can have more direct of him, which is the Irfani way, perhaps he meant. The third opinion is what Mullah Sadr has said. He says there are two ways to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One is through Irfan, the second is through Tanzi. Tanzi, Taqdis, Tasbih, Glorification. Irfan is a very good way, but it is not possible for everyone. It's for prophets and Kummalin, those who are very advanced in Ma'rafa. Therefore, the second remains, and that is through Tanzi, to say Allah is greater. Imam Khomeini says, of course, it seems that uh, Mullah Sadra has taken the explanation of Sheikh al sadu as part of the Hadith. The fourth opinion is by Mullah Muhsin Faiz Kashani. One of our great scholars is Mullah Muhsin Faiz Kashani, as you know, and actually he was uh, one of the students of Mullah Sadra, one of also his sons-in-law. He has many books on tafsir, on hadith, on aqaid, on irfan. A great, great scholar. So Mullah Muhsin Faiz says, it's a little bit difficult. He says, every being has two dimensions, mahiya and wujud fluidity and existence. In philosophy, we have discussed this. But he looks at this issue from a funny perspective, not just philosophical. He says, mahiya or quiddity or whatness is a matter of those essential uh, properties, qualities, that's something else, which makes its identity. But the existential side is what he calls Yali Rabbi. Yali means comes later, immediately. Yali Rabbi means is related to the Lord. So when you look at the existential side, existential side of everything is facing God, is a kind of divine uh, aspect and dimension. And it is because of that side, not because of Mahiya, because of this existential side that everything has some power, some effects, and can play a role in the world of realities. He says, if we want to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these Mahijat and through their contingency and their poverty and need we want to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's possible and it's very common but you have known him with the help of his creatures the best is if you use the other dimension wujudi existential side yale rabbi which is very much uh, like a ray or radiation that if you pay attention you see the source existence of us quickly takes us to the creator to the originator and he says maybe these verses he is with you wherever you are or 
these are the existential side. So we Arafullah Billah means not to try to know him through Mahiyat, try to know him through divine dimension or divine aspect of things that are existentially created by God and connected to him. So these are four opinions. Shaykh Kulaini's opinion, Shaykh Saduq, Mullah Sadra, and Mullah Muhsin Faith Kashana. Then he has another opinion that takes time because he brings an introduction to introduce some terminologies and then he makes his point. So inshallah, we leave it for the next session. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.